So I've been a landlord now for 20 years, nearly. Uh, it hasn't always been easy. So I know Jess has had over two decades worth now of landlord experience and with that, I know that obviously a lot of mistakes have been made along the way and I've asked Jess to come up with the five things he wished he knew before he became a landlord. Let's get into it. Okay, so then let's start with the first of your five things. I, I have my list, I pre-prepared it. I think the, well, the first thing that I um, got it on there, num number one lesson I learned it a decade in, a decade in. Um, so I've been investing in a land, as a landlord. I probably got, I, well, I know, I owned over a hundred houses when I learned this lesson and I've, I've titled it, Keep It Professional. Um, okay. it, it's a business mm -hmm. and I agree. I was, when I became a landlord, I was already in business, another business, and it was a side like thing. Like a lot of, lo almost landlord, all landlords. Pretty, I mean, all what, what landlord wakes up one morning and yeah. says, I'm going to make this my full-time business? You don't, do you? No. Not, you? You've got to lead into it. It's my full-time business now. Um, but it meant that I, through two, one, one, I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. And also, I wasn't taking it seriously enough. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it, so, so, you know. So you said be keep keep professional, be professional. Yeah. Of you know what what did you start doing professionally then that perhaps you were doing amateur before? Well, I learnt my lesson when Craig started. So our current lettings director has been with us all that way through. So he wasn't our first employee; he was our second. Right. <laughs> so he was the second member of the team. First one was Paige. She's still with us too. So Paige came along and was. Um, well, at that stage, negotiator, just mm. general office admin, but we didn't really know what she did. Now she's um, you know, quite, quite senior, um, but she sort of put a, a level of getting stuff done, but that wasn't the bit where it really clicked. Craig came in, he'd got a lot of experience in the business, and uh, he put proper systems processes in place, referencing for tenants, uh -huh. rent collection. I had been putting an advert I don't even know where we used to put an ad, but we used to put a piece of paper so in the window. Right, fair so fair to, to say rent. then, be professional. You meant do what a letting agent does. You started doing what That's a, a really good letting point. agent of does. Of course, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. as a landlord then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. That's it. Because I know, I know most self-managing landlords have a full-time job mm. and they try their best. They mean well, mm -hmm. um, but they just make mistakes because they're not doing yeah. it full-time like a full-time, a letting agent is a full-time thing. I'll, I'll give yeah. you an example. Yeah, yeah. On a, on a, uh, I've got a new house, it's empty. I put a sign in the window on a piece of A4, rent now. I might have put it on spare rooms or open rent or something yeah. like that. I get some phone calls to my mobile phone. I, I miss half of them, but mm -hmm. out of the half that I do get, I book some appointments. The first person that turns up with cash in their hand and a pulse, I take it, because why yeah, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Referencing, I didn't even know what referencing was. I might have said, you smell all right, and you know, you, I, can I see a bank statement, please? I, I yeah. pretend I did referencing, because I didn't really know what it was. Um, uh, the contract I got them signed up, I knew I needed an AST. Yeah. Um, I went to W. H. Smith's, got one of those ones off the shelf and photocopied it and got them to sign it. Um, the didn't take the right deposits. Maybe I didn't yeah. take any so deposits So you didn't do what an agent does. Yeah, then I, 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 I knew I had to get them to stand, sign a standing order, so I got my rent, but then I forgot to put it in the bank. Or when I put it in the bank, I forgot to chase up. And mm. two months later, I realized I hadn't had my first rent, month's rent paid. Then I realized I hadn't got actually a note of their phone number properly, so I had to go around <laughs> and knock, but that was three days later. All those things are just not professional. And I was a bit too pally with the tenants, maybe. That's um, a big mistake. Didn't do property inspections at all. Like, literally didn't do them at all for years. You see why you needed a Latin agent then? Yeah, so, the, so that, that, number okay. one. It, number it, one, it, yeah, be professional. Be professional. Yeah. Don't do what a Latin me. agent does. I, yeah. I, um, I always say, you know, I'm, I'm not... A, I'm, not smug sitting in and no, we've got all the answers. Every single answer we've got now comes from me being stupid and doing it the wrong way before. So there we go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All um, right, number two then. Um, setting the proper financial expectations. Okay. This nice. is, by today, is really, really good. Like yeah. it's, it's properly good. It's as good as it gets. I can't mm -hmm. think of a better investment strategy, but if you write things down on a piece of paper, uh, you can make it look a lot better than that. Don't, that, which is ridiculous, you know, it's like, you yeah. know, oh, I'm not making 50% or 30% or whatever. Yeah. No, no, you make 18, which is the best. It's out, out of the world better because you've also got yeah. capital growth on top of it. It's very tax efficient, all these things. It is absolutely stonking, but you've got to think of all those extra little costs. You will have voids. You will have maintenance. You will have other costs that creep in. Remember them all. 
uh, don't be surprised about them because there's not a lot you can do about them. There was some some things you can do about them, but not not a lot um, about some of them. But if you didn't think about them, they become a disappointment. Yeah. And I see some landlords and me, maybe in my early early days, and you just oh my god, why, why am I spending this? Why am I spending that? It's not as good as I. Th- I was. The cash in the bank disappeared, and it wasn't my my, my profit eroded. Actually, if that had been my profit, it would have been bloody incredible. It was mm. never going to be. I, I, I guess the big one would be capital expenditure, boilers, carpets, new yep. kitchen, roofs, that stuff that comes out and it's like three, four, five thousand pounds maybe for you know a new roof. And you can't think, oh my God, I've just lost that money. It was never yours in the first place. You should have been budgeting sure. for all those capital expenditure things as you go through. And um, yeah, don't think that that headline cash in the bank, that's just cash flow. It's not your profit. You've got those other expenditures to come through. Be, a, be a realistic and be really, really happy that um, it's bloody good. Yeah. It might not be 50%, 20% is bloody amazing. Plus capital growth, yep, I agree. plus all those things. So yeah, that, that's, that's my number two, being, being realistic about being financials. Being realistic, mm-hmm. fantastic. Okay, number three then. Number three, <clears throat> um, I wrote down responsibility okay. as a landlord. You know, book stops with you. Um, you've got a responsibility. If you're self-managing, you've got to be available 24-7. Yep. You've got to look after things properly. You've got a responsibility to know what a landlord is responsible for, you know, um, you've got to maintain the property, decent and safe homes, you've got to answer the phone and deal with maintenance for your tenant. Um, yeah. I think another way is sort of extending what responsibility means. I feel now, now, now I have a responsibility to my wife, my kids, um, everybody else around to, to, to do a good job. Mm-hmm. You can, if you forget about it and you're an absent landlord, um, if you don't own it in your mind, you say, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to do a good job of this then it pretty quickly becomes a bit average and it might even open yourself up to yeah. um, sort of compliance problems. So yeah, own it, become a landlord. There's a lot of talk about, and I do agree with it, I, I agree with the sentiment, instead of be, to calling yourself a landlord, call yourself an investor. Oh, so you yeah, focus totally. on that. Yeah. Agree with that, but then come back around 360 degrees and say, I'm a landlord as well. Part mm. of being an investor is making sure that those hand grenades that can get lobbed in because I've sort of uh, abdicated my responsibility as a landlord, mm-hmm. I'm hands off, I'm just an investor. No, you're not, you're a landlord. Yeah. And if you don't understand that, as an investor, you're gonna lose out because this will cost you, that'll cost you, you'll get fined, there'll be compliance. It, it's it's you know stuff that you need to be responsible for looking after. So okay. bear Being that in mind. Yeah, that's number three. Fantastic, okay then. your next take question, number four. number four. <laughs> How am I doing, yeah. Number four. Um, it kind of follows on from number three. Be prepared for some work. The more you put in, the more yeah, you get out. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not passive then. No, no, I don't think it is. I think it, relatively speaking, God, it is passive, but it's not fully yeah. compared with other things you could do. Yes, of course, it, it's very passive. Yes, it is. It, is. Um, it it's it, you know, you don't have to open doors every morning. You don't have to employ yeah. people. It's, it's very simple, really. I mean, you know, it might feel like there's. You know, when when I'm saying do some work, you know, know your responsibilities, read up on legislation, mm-hmm. read a profit and loss report every now and again, engage with your letting agent, your property manager. I have a monthly meeting with my property manager and you know, it takes an hour. You know, it's work, but it's an hour a month. I mean, it's not yeah. considering yeah. And I can do it whenever I want. I do it on Teams and um, everything gets sorted in that hour. That's pretty easy. But you yeah. do need to do that. It'd be very easy for me, and I used to, you know, this, you know these, these are the sort of maybe... Thing, you, you get the theme of the things that I wish I'd known. The first one, be professional. I'm now professional in the way I, I, I approach the amount of work that needs happening. I, I compartmentalise it. It's not massively onerous, like I say, an hour a month plus a few bits here and there. Refinancing, that becomes a job by itself. Mm. Uh, a if task. you're doing loads of them, yeah. If you're doing loads of them, yeah. yeah. But again, an hour a month, maybe a couple of 10 minutes here and there, check in, check an email, say yes to this doc, you sign that, those kind of things. Um, we have now got um, a bit of a back office function. So I've got bookkeepers, I've got an accountant, so every once, every what, year, then there's other work to do there. Again, that's work. Yeah, yeah. Definitely get a bookkeeper or have a bookkeeping package. And you know, the amount of people that do it all on Excel at the end of the year, I know, I mean, it's, it's the average. You do it at the end of the year. No, no, no you no, don't know. No. used to. John, used to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you used to do an Excel spreadsheet mm-hmm. once every year, yeah? I recommend my how accountant mu- to clients. How, yeah. how much different is it having a P&L every month, so you've actually got, oh, this is what profit we made, 
and it brings those unexpected expenditures, keeps you realistic, brings the unexpected, uh, unexpected expenditures to the front of your mind where you can do something mm. about them there and then, whereas otherwise you're looking down a list at the end of the year and it's too late. You're, you, good management is about spotting it that month, yep. having that conversation, oh, that void was a bit too long. Bring up your property manager, put that on the list. What can we do to make our voids shorter next time? Yeah, you know, just put a bit of pressure on here and there, and um, that's that's what we do. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's number four. Okay, and then there we go. The final one, number, number five. five. I thought long and hard about this one because I'll be honest, I'd run out. I'd only found four. <laughs> well, there was one one set of lists that was eight, and then I condensed it into four. And um, then the well, then the fifth one went up into set property expectations because it's all about the capital expenditure and maintenance costs. But the fifth one, after I sat and thought about it, I had to go away for a day and actually think about it, but it was easy. Have some fun. Right. I spend a lot of time, spent a lot of time. Ha have some fun. After you get to the point where this <clears> is possible, and, and I took a long time doing it, I spent 15 years not taking any money out of the portfolio at all. Um, and I could very, I, I was probably five years too long. Right. Um, have some fun with it. Spend a bit of it. That's my new advice to myself. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So num right. number five. Um, yeah, when you've kind of got, you know, you've got a, a substantial way along. You, you know, you, for the for the first few years, if you're serious, you've got yeah. to keep your head down. Yeah. Um, but even in that bit, you can still have fun. Still celebrate the 360 days a year you didn't get a phone call yeah, saying there was a, a roof leak or yeah. something um i think you could you should always be looking to have fun yeah. along the journey not just when you've kind of hit your target yeah. you know what i mean we're not fully so we've now got a, a this is this is not my natural self my natural self is to be you know like a, a martyr to it and just absolutely beast mode and keep going and keep going and like, right, make make it almost hurt that how much you're not taking out blah, blah, blah. be really, really, like delayed gratification but emily wife says mm -hmm. let's not do that and she's right she's totally right you know um so now things like having regular goals when you do this we used to do actually there was a point when we used to have a bottle of champagne every time we opened we, we did a emily likes wine so you know buy a bottle yeah, of champagne you bought a house or something, yeah? yeah so we're doing yeah. that kind of thing again now um every every um milestone thing we're going to do this we're going to go out on holiday and do nice. this or we're going to open this bottle of wine or we're going to go there or you know so you actually say when this happens this is going to happen and tie it to that which is just a bit of fun I like it um in the grand scheme of things if you're opening a very expensive bottle of wine every time you buy a house it's cheaper than your solicitor's bill you know, so actually in the grand scheme <laughs> yeah. of things it's like oh that, it makes a, something that you wouldn't normally spend or you feel guilty buying for your okay. you know in comparatively not cheap, but you know, so yeah. we deserve this and we wanted it and it was tied to it. Make sure you do it. So that'll be my, uh, my, my fifth right. one. So they're the five things Jess, Jess wish he knew before um, setting out to, mm. to be a property investor and a landlord. Yeah. Uh, so I hope maybe that helps you. Hopefully it helps, yeah. If, think... it, if it has, mm. please like and subscribe. It helps us. Mm. Um, I think all those things are e easier achieved with a... Um, with a letting agency behind you. So let's turn the yeah. tables. If that's yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. pick up the phone to Adam, book a call, because uh, we're a letting agent and we'd very much like to uh, manage your properties if that's something you've got properties already or, or help you on the journey, exactly. source your property. Wherever you're engaging with us yeah. um, on this, there'll be a link in a, in a description, in a bio somewhere, you can book a call with me. Yep. And um, I'll be glad to have a chat and answer any questions you've got. Great, well, that's it for today, is it? I think so. Yeah. Bye for now. All right, thanks.